we need to do something because tracks are getting shut left, right and centre. You can't tell me that a convoy of 10 full drives is going to do more damage than a sand mine with 50 tonne machines. If something tells me we're going to have Sooty drive in with about 5,000 full wheel drives down to Parliament House to mm. protest because if we don't do something about this and stand united as a full yeah. drive community, we're going to lose all this like Australian said, bush, exactly. mate. Well, g'day and welcome to another Beers in the Shed. In the shed. Cheers, Jesse. In now, the Nissan Shed, mate. In the Nissan Shed, and that's what I was about to get to. We are in Jesse's Shed, which is very different, and I'm um, very excited to be here, mate. Mm. I've got to say, you run a pretty tight ship around here. Yeah, I just finished mopping the floor just before you got here. I know, I know. There's a, there's a, there's a bit of... Uh, there's a lot of Nissans around yeah, here, I'll, lot, tell you, yeah. I'll tell you that much, but it's um, it's a cool little shed, mate. I'm really stoked to be doing our business shed from here. Now, we have a really big business shed to get through today. Mm. In fact, our hot topic is one that we've been meaning to do for a long time, and um, it's something that we're very, very passionate about. I know you guys are too. It's going to be somewhat controversial, and no doubt you want to have your say in the comments as well. We're talking about track closures. We're seeing around Australia right now, so many tracks are getting closed, and we know once they're closed- Too what, many, too uh, many. Too, way too many. One yeah. track closes is usually too much, but it's happening in spades, mate, yeah. and there's tracks getting closed right around the country. We'll get onto that in a minute. But first, I wanted to say a big congratulations to you, mate. To me. Because you guys might not know, but Jesse recently, you and your missus had a baby girl. Yeah, we did. And yeah. I want to say a huge congr in fact, in fact, I know I'm in a Nissan shed, mate, but I thought oh. I thought you don't even know about this. <laughs> I want now show everyone what I've just this is little surprise. Little surprise. Have a look at this, mate. <laughs> Have a look at this. this. Surely this is gonna be a piss take. <laughs> oh look. show the crowd. How awesome is that? That is really Shorty cool. Shorty 40. Yeah, exactly oh. right. I reckon, doesn't matter what side of the fence, that is pretty cool. She's going to look good in that. Thanks, mate. Look fantastic, That is mate. awesome. I just wanted to get you that. And, Thank um, you. And uh, exactly right, because I, I, I imagine my, you certainly wouldn't be buying outfits like that. Oh, 40 series <laughs> are pretty cool. They I, are cool. The first car I went full driving, it was a Shorty 40. My old man had one, so there I don't you know, go. I like that. There you go. Your first bit of Toyota stuff in a Nissan Shed. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, look, and we've got a bunch of stuff coming up as well on the channel. So let's go through some of that, Jesse. I want to start with um, the USA episode. Everyone's been talking about it. Yeah. I, I saw you when you first got back and you wouldn't stop talking for about 10 minutes about it. Like it sounds, and I saw Jock and Graham was here the other day. I, it, everyone's been frothing over it. I'm keen to see the episodes. It, mate, it, it is absolutely mind-blowing stuff. So the USA episodes are coming up really soon. You guys have been asking for it. Some of the craziest, and most epic mm. four-wheel driving we have ever done. I'm talking about tough tracks, scenic situations, bears in campsites. Yeah, that sounds wild. It really was, mate. It was a trip of a lifetime and I can't wait to share that with you guys. Um, you've been up to some crazy stuff as well, Yeah, mate. I just got back last week down uh, down doing some hard stuff in New South Wales with uh, Jocko. Had yep. the pony and Daryl back together. Yeah. We spent a couple of days in the shed, probably half a day doing some mods on Daryl and the rest on the pony, but um, some awesome improvements and that's going to be it's going to be a good one. Good every, one to watch. Every time you and Jocko head in the bush, mate, you can guarantee a couple of things. Mm. A lot of laughs and some very tough tracks. Mm, mm. And from judging, well, I had a chat with Jocko the other week, judging by some of the tracks you did, yeah. some really big ones. Yeah, yeah, that was. Yeah, <laughs> it, it was it was an awesome trip. And I hadn't wheeled much in New South, but I'd only ever done coughs. So, yeah, wow. it was cool to, cool to see some of the stuff oh, down there. I'll be, be back. Red hot. And the other week as well, I had the pleasure of catching up with, now you guys might know this YouTube channel. We did a bit of a collaboration, I think that's what the cool kids say, yeah. with Donut Media. That, that, was, that was a fun, that was the start of our trip. Yeah, that was I, a fun day. How fun was that? Yeah, that was awesome. We got to take these guys from the US out on our tough tracks. We went and drove a couple of things. We even mm. got them to drive some of our yeah, eggs. that was entertaining, yeah. Oh, I can't <laughs> wait to show you all yeah. of that. So um, there's more of that really soon. I just wanted to give you a little sneak peek mm. of that one. So um, I reckon without any further ado, mate, um, let's get into the hot topic. It's a big one, like I yeah, said. Very and, um, controversial too. And I want you guys to join in on the conversation below because we're keen to hear exactly what you think mm. and as we go through this one, mate. Now, as far as I'm concerned, this is happening way too often. Now, Jesse, you were just down in New South Wales. What did you see down there on the ground, mate? We went to Lithgow and we were struggling to find the tracks. Jock had all these tracks in mind that he normally drives and he hadn't been there for probably six months or so and heaps of them are getting closed um, just because rubbish and then obviously turning into conservation area and getting mined and stuff like that. So we really struggled for tracks in that area and it's, it's sad because Jock reckons there's some good ones and that's sort of where he's cut his teeth at as well. So Exactly right, mate. And what happens, right? So... When I first started four-wheel driving, many of my favourite tracks have since been closed down. Mm. And I'm sure yeah, you, could, you, you yeah. could probably rattle off 
some local tracks and you've probably got about a dozen really cool tracks that now have gates, you'll never ever be able to full drive in those places again. Now what's happening is it seems like on a monthly occurrence, a famous track is being shut down. Mm. The problem is once a gate goes across those tracks, they're never going to open and back up. That is yeah. it. You've lost that track for good. And because we're, I think, lucky that we live in Australia, we have a lot of options. We're not making too much of a song and dance about these track closures mm. because we're, oh, it's, you know, it's a shame, but we'll go and drive these other tracks. Exactly. The problem is in five to 10 years time, and you want to take your kids out for driving, there's going to be nowhere to go. Yeah, there's going to be no other tracks, is there? Exactly right. Mm. So we need to do something about track closures. Now let's have a look about it. Now you're talking about Nunes in particular down in Lithgow and those areas yeah. down in New South Wales. Now I've just heard they've closed a lot of the Lost City down. Yeah, and, um, so we couldn't get to it. It's fu fully shut and there's a construction site there that turning into a, like a, a tourist attraction apparently. So all the four-wheel driving around it, even there's like some Ranger Bob, which is a four-wheel drive New South Wales like managed track, that's closed. We couldn't, we couldn't do it. We've got a lot of issues that are happening. Now, a lot of the time they use the guise of turning a place into a conservation area or mm. trying to protect the environment as a reason, as a management strategy to close a track. Mm. Now, the problem I have with this if you stick to the track, you're not really causing any environmental damage. Exactly, yeah. If you educate four-wheel drivers and people how to treat the Australian bush, well, guess what? You're not causing any environmental impact. Mm. What really annoys me, a lot of the times when they close these tracks, and this is, I think, the case with Nunes, mate, and around some of this area, you'll see that they've closed the tracks, and what happens six months later, a mining company yeah. comes in and starts mining this area. Now, yeah. if you're really, really serious about protecting the environment, the last thing you want to do is let a mining company come in yeah. and absolutely rape and pillage the environment. Yet four-wheel drivers are getting tarnished with with, with, with yeah. this negative stigma. You can't tell me that a convoy of 10 four-wheel drivers is going to do more damage than a sand mine with 50-ton Ex machines and in I it. Think, I think exactly right, and I think the answer is education. How do we educate mm. people to know what to do in the bush? Now, this takes me to something I was just doing recently. We talked about the American trips. I was recently in the US wheel with Graham and Jocko over there, and we had an absolute blast. Mm. The tracks were insane. Now, I was a bit... A bit apprehensive, I suppose, about going to the Rubicon Trail, one of the most iconic, famous mm. tracks in the it's world. It's real famous, yeah. yeah every, I've known about that track since I was a kid. I didn't even know what state of the US it was. Yeah. You know, I knew about yeah. that as being a, a premier four-wheel drive track. Now, when I got there, there was no, and you might think I'm exaggerating. There might have been a, a lineup of about 500 Jeeps ready to 500. do 500? I'm not even... Wow. If anything, I'm underplaying it. I think there was well over 1,000 or 1,500 Jeeps for that weekend. Oh, yeah. Went and did the Rubicon Trail. We just happened to pick... It's a lot of tow trucks. <laughs> it really is. A lot of oil leaks. Yeah. No, no. And um, so, look, they all took off and um, we, we ended up... So, there would have been probably 1,000 forward drives on that track oh, that yeah. weekend. Now, That's crazy. They went before us. Now, I guess... Now, I was thinking to myself, it's going to be it's going to be disgusting, that track, because you know what happens with the local tracks in Australia. When yeah, you imagine go, if that happened at Glasshouse or something. Uh, any of the local tracks near a, near a, near a main thoroughfare mm. or capital city gets yep. a lot of tra uh, tra uh, people exploring those tracks. You, you get a lot of rubbish and all that mm. sort of jazz. I did not see one bit of rubbish the entire weekend. Wow. Now, we've, we've talked about this briefly, but like – I'm not exaggerating. We literally didn't see any rubbish. Now, the, the reason why you don't see that over there, those guys came very close to losing the Rubicon Trail. Oh, true. They were going to close it because it was getting abused. Yeah. And it's the same thing we see in the tracks over here. They get mm. abused, and guess what? The easiest management strategy is to put a big gate across it's it and it, yeah. stop everyone coming across. Yeah. Now, the problem with that is you lose access, number one. Number two, if there's a fire or, a, or, a, or a, some sort of emergency disaster mm. in the bush, if those tracks don't get driven, Mother yeah. Nature claims them over and you don't have access to the bush. Exactly. So in firefighting um, cases and things yeah. like that, you can't get access. Therefore, we have a bigger issue. An environmental yeah. disaster can happen. So, yeah. so what you get over there in America is everyone doing the right thing and the full drivers themselves police it. Now, there's a Rubicon yeah. Foundation and there's people that actually go around and make sure people are doing the right thing. But at the end of the day, it comes down to the responsibility of the four-wheel driver yeah. to make sure 100%. you and your mates are doing the right thing. So, we're going four-wheel driving, Jesse and I, and we've got a, a bloke with us and he, you see him throw a beer can out the window. Mm. We go knock on his window and say, mate, go pick it up. Stop being a, a numbskull and take your rubbish out. Exactly. And um, that's what we need to do because I don't think enough of Australians – are sort of standing up around their mates and saying, you know, you shouldn't be putting glass yeah. bottles in the fire. You they shouldn't think, be doing oh, it's, it's one glass bottle, it's one can. But if everyone does one well, glass bottle, know, one can. I don't want to say anything because yeah. I might upset exactly. the convoy. Upset them, no. upset them. Absolutely. Call because them I'll tell you what, the, the, the worst case scenario is we do lose more and more tracks and then we've got nowhere to go for mm. driving. 
So um, look, I, I, this is this is, a, this is a topic that's very close to our hearts here yeah. at Four Wheel Drive Twenty Four Seven. We're big advocates for having a lot of fun out in the bush, but at the same time respecting and taking care of the environment. Because at the end of the day, you know, I, w- I will go as far to say, mate, that I'm a greenie. I might have a different mentality of the greenies you see down yeah. in the main street of Sydney marching and protesting mm-hmm. and chaining themselves to trees. But I'm a greenie because I love the Aussie bush. It's simple yeah. as that. I'm an environmentalist. I spend more time in the bush than nearly anyone else. I understand the bush. And, of course, I want to protect it as yeah. well. And I love taking my four-wheel drive out there and exploring it because it's, it's, it's more than just a hobby to me. It's a passion. It's a lifestyle. And I'm yeah. sure you guys are sitting there thinking exactly the same for me as well. So we need, what, I'm, what I'm getting at, mate, is we need to do something because tracks are getting shut left, right, and center. And yeah. I think it's high time we actually do something, take a stand. Mm. And to do that, we're going to need help from you guys. We're going to need the four-wheel drive community to come to together. together yeah. It's the only way to do it. 100%. People power, mate. It works. And if all these lobby groups, environmentalists trying to kick us out of the bush, if they're having the biggest say... We know as four-wheel drivers, there's a lot of there's probably going to be half a million people watching this show right now. 100%, yeah. Ten yep. percent of those guys actually cared and got involved. Well, guess what? We're going to make a lot of noise, and we're actually going to stand up and protect our environment, and keep it open and access available. Yep. And we're, like you said, we're we're greenies. We we don't, we enjoy the bush. We take our cars out to enjoy it. We don't go to abuse it. We enjoy it, and it's not that hard to pick up after yourself and uh, leave no trace. Basically, nothing but wheel tracks. It's it's a bit cliche, but it's true. It's not hard yeah, to do. And we need to because mm. because I've seen it over the years, mate. I've been four-wheel driving for a good 20 years now. And maybe 10 years ago, I reckon there's a quarter of the people doing it for fun as yeah. there is these days. Yeah. Since COVID, I've seen numbers influx, eh? numbers have exploded. There's a lot of people new to the bush yeah. who are taking it. And I think it's a great thing. Yeah. But guess what? With more people, it becomes more pressure. Yeah. And we need more education to get that word out there mm. that people do the right thing. Now, if I can, yesterday, I actually caught up with a mate of mine, a bloke called Bushy from Back to the Bush. Now, this bloke is running in a great initiative where he's actually fighting. He's putting himself out there and fighting to keep tracks and access open. He's Good working with That's traditional landowners and he's going against government and national parks and some of these, you know, big establishments. Yep. And uh, he's not making many friends there, but guess what? He's getting some success in keeping tracks open. So I had a good yarn with him, mate. Why don't we go check out what we had to say? Yeah, I'm keen, I'm keen to see that. Well, Bushy, welcome to Beers in the Shed, mate. It's great having you on. I know you and I have talked about this um, for some time now. Finally good to uh, be able to get you in front of the screen, mate, and have a chat to our audience because um, the topic we're talking about today, of course, is very relevant um, to the whole community. And obviously you are a bit of an expert in this space. You've put a lot of time and dedication um, into fighting the great fight, mate. Now, I just wanna uh, quickly get you to explain to our audience Um, exactly what you do. So we're at Back to the Bush. We're the authorized rangers on country. We've done everything from responding actively uh, to the needs of community during natural disasters, floods, drought, bushfires. Our biggest um, function at the moment is advocacy piece. Back to the Bush, you're encouraging people to get back to the bush in the sense that you're trying to keep tracks open so more Australians can actually go out and uh, experience the great outdoors. Isn't that one of the main things you guys do? Exactly right. I think bush users have a a very important function to play in the management of our environment. Now, the bureaucracy doesn't see it that way, uh, but we're very much about promoting that. Mm -hmm. I think we have a very important part to play in the environment. Um, we also have a duty of care and we're also all custodians of protecting this sacred country. Yeah, look, the way I say it, mate, is um, Back to the Bush is doing a fantastic job about standing up for bush users, people who enjoy the Aussie bush and um, and trying to make sure that these places aren't shut down. Probably a couple of things um, going against keeping our tracks open. There's obviously people, there's a minority maybe doing the wrong thing and there's probably also, um, as you might say, um, bureaucratic legislation where it's easier to try and manage a track by closing it down than to try and keep it open and promote education. Yeah, it's an overreach of power really and they claim that by locking a gate, they are preserving and protecting that area of the environment. Um, their policies on, on four-wheel drive access in a national parks is really quite limited. Um, it's, it, it, I'm just dumbfounded at how they say fire trails are only to be used for park management purposes and firefighting. Why? Because they don't see they see people entering the bush with their four-wheel drives responsibly as destroying the environment. How mm. are you destroying the environment if you're sticking to a fire trail? With respect to Australia, 
that is accelerating, the closures are accelerating and the bureaucratic layers are becoming um, quite profound in the way in which they govern legislation. And it's done nothing to preserve and protect the environment. We've seen this since the 60s. We've most, lost millions of hectares of our environment to maladministration and neglect, and not one locked gate has done anything to save a frog or a, mm -hmm. or a lizard um, that they so claim uh, are, are critically threatened, uh, endangered species. Now, keeping tracks open is one thing. Now, how do, we keep, how do we keep them open and show that we're actually responsible and deserve to have these tracks open? Because I, like you, mate, I see a minority of people who go into the bush, they throw their rubbish, they go off the tracks, they don't give four-wheel drivers a good name. I, I believe there's something we need to police internally as four-wheel drivers and make it not acceptable for people to do the wrong thing because they only need a shred of evidence, mate, as you know, and before they um, try and close places down. It's just about... Um being reasonable and being uh, and understanding the conditions in which you're going into um, it, it's just small things like that on top of that it's about educating your mates if you find that your mates mm -hmm. are probably doing not not quite the right thing be brave and say hey mate do you want to just have a think about what you just done um do you yeah. think that's that's responsible keeping to tracks not going off the tracks not making your own tracks in the bush um, those tracks are there for a reason. They're there for firefighting. They're there. A lot of them are there strategically to manage bushfires, um, mm -hmm. both for hazard reductions and also tackling a, a raging fire. Um, and also, obviously, it, it's so simple. Just don't litter. Don't throw that bottle and the can out of the window. Uh, clean up Not after it. yourself. It's such a simple thing, mate, but... I can't understand how people can't get it through their head that it's not the right thing to do by dumping your litter in the bush. If you bring something in, you bring it out. It's really, really simple. I've grown up like as a kid knowing this is the case, mate. And I, I just, it, it, I'm dumbfounded to think that people think it's acceptable to leave their rubbish in the bush. But what you said, mate, is a key thing. It's, we're gonna self-police this. If your mate's doing the wrong thing, kick him up the backside. Let him know he's doing the wrong thing and, and make sure that rubbish goes back home and he's not being an idiot with his four wheel drive because it's just simple things like that, as you say, can get tracks shut down and it pretty much undoes a lot of the hard work you're fighting for at the moment. And just, just another thing, Shawno, um, if you're driving on a fire trail, if you pass a campsite and you see rubbish on the ground, please, please stop and pick it up. Don't just drive past it. I know it's not your problem, but it becomes your problem and our problem when you drive past that. We need to show yes. authorities that we care for the bush and we love the bush. Now, this is particularly relevant to Victoria where you're still allowed to carry a chainsaw in your vehicle. In New South Wales and Queensland, you're not allowed to carry an ax, a chainsaw or any handsaw with you in a national park, let alone use it. You cannot do any of that. You it's, are breaking the law if you clear a fire trail in a New South Wales National Park. It is absurd and dangerous. Um, yeah. That's, see, that, this is legislation that, that's obviously made by the greenies that live in the inner city. They've got no idea. No Me idea. clearing a, a log that's in the middle of a track. Surely if there's a fire, I'm doing the right thing for the fireies who need to get access through in, in a hurry. They don't have time to be cutting trees down that have fallen over a track. We're talking about dead trees here. We're not talking about cutting down live gum trees and, and ruining habitats. We're talking about trees that are over the track and uh, basically maintaining our tracks. Yeah, and, and on that, if you're in Victoria, um, please clear the track properly. I'm seeing a lot of cases now when I'm going through Victoria, people are driving around fallen trees. Um, they're destroying the environment as a result of that. Please care about these things. Get out, chop it up, pull it off to the side and proceed. Now I can't say the same thing for you to do in New South Wales because that's illegal. So I cannot be seen to be promoting you to clear a trail in New South Wales <laughs> National Parks, but please, um, please clear them, clear them out of the way. And you're right, we are not, we're not cutting down live trees. I've had a lot of backlash from people from the fringe that don't quite understand the purpose of these of this legislation. Um, people who are going to break the law are going to break the law anyway. People who are going to cut down a live tree are going to break that law anyway, and they're going to try and get away with it. Responsible people are being persecuted. I use that word strongly persecuted from accessing the bush due to the actions of a few and also an overreach of environmental bureaucracy. Mate, very, very well said, I couldn't agree more. So as part of what we do for the community, um, we take groups out 
into the bush, to learn about the bush, to understand the bush and to really appreciate why we come out into the bush. We've done something similar with Yeah The Girls. We've had a, a, a chapter of Yeah The Girls come out with us. We've taken them out and done a bush cleanup. Um, we've talked about Indigenous history in the area. We've um, learned about bush, uh, bush management, bush tucker, bush medicine. Mm. And we've also learned about trails, trail maintenance and what the importance of fire trails are to us and how we can take care of them. I, I invite any sort of four wheel drive group to come together um, and reach out to me. And uh, particularly if it's anywhere around New South Wales, I'm more than happy to take you out onto my backyard and show you what's so special about the country. And hopefully you'll be able to come out there a little bit more wiser about how you can be a custodian uh, in protecting this bush and really, really actually um, not so much going out there and, and enjoying the four wheel driving side of it, but actually becoming in love with the environment and sacred country as well it comes the, the two work hand in hand if you ask me and, and there's no better solution than providing the right education to people and um and and um, that's going to do a lot to try and keep our access open to the bush mate look i'm going to put down a lower third with your instagram handle folks if you want to get in touch and find out more information um please um hit bushy up and um and see what he's up to and and, and uh follow his journey mate thank you so much for coming on to our our show and from what i can get from all of this there's a big fight that needs to happen and it's got to be led by four wheel drivers. If we want to keep access open to the Australian bush, we need to band together, do the right thing. And um, mate, we're going to follow your lead and be looking to you guys to, um, I guess, I guess help fight this great fight, mate, because I, I know there's a lot of people watching this right now that are very passionate about keeping their back, uh, backyard open. And um, we need somebody leading this mate and fighting the good fight. So uh, thank you again for coming on the show and uh, keep up the great work. Pleasure, thanks, Sean. There you go, mate. I've got to say, I absolutely agree with Bushy, and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to say right now that I'm going to be helping this bloke. Yeah, he's doing, he's doing good things. He's definitely. doing great things, and I think, you know, someone like us, we've got a certain responsibility. We uh, reach a lot of TVs and mobile definitely, phone screens yeah. out there, a lot of 100%. viewers, and uh, I think that's something that we're very passionate about. And um, hopefully, we can work together to get mm. the best solution, which is keeping tracks open and accessible for all Australians. Yeah, that really is the message there, definitely. mate. Um, a cool thing I heard from Jock when I was away with him, he said, when you're in America on some of the tracks, there was spill kits available. So if you broke apart or you needed to, you know, mm -hmm. take oil or broken bits, you actually get a bag and a spill kit to take that away. So a lot of the tracks in Australia, like you said, close to a capital city, you go there and there's broken car parts, even Cape York number plates and well, bumper bars everywhere. Just don't leave it in the bush. You went there with it, so take it home. Exactly, exactly right, mate. And people do that on purpose. I think they don't want to carry a busted old CV out with them because yeah. they might get some grease in their Ute tray. Yeah. Come on, guys. We need to actually clean up after ourselves. That is the that is the number one thing we can do as a four wheel drive community. Whatever we take into the bush, yeah, we take out. And it's it's so simple. It's so easy it, it, to do, mate. When I was five years old, I knew better than the exactly, lead. Exactly. Yeah. You're rubbish hanging around. So yeah. I can't understand why people still think it's acceptable. Yeah. And you know, putting a CV in a tree is is not a hero move. Yeah. In fact, you're ruining it for us. And, if you um, wouldn't do it at home, don't do it in the bush. Exactly right, mate. Exactly right. Um, here's an, here's another thing I found out as well. We're talking about track closures. Now, another place that's really dear to me is this place up in the Northern Territory, okay? It's a it's a million acre station, essentially, that, um, you know, Graham, myself have been up there numerous times, even off our own bat on holidays. It's very special to us. And I just heard just recently, they've been closed down to tourism. Now, oh, true. Yeah, and this is happening left, right and centre. Now, what's happened is basically there's a lot of bureaucratic red tape being put up to make it more expensive because he's got tourists coming to the place. Yeah. It's been shut down and what's happened, he didn't want to pay the bills because they're so bloody expensive yeah, in the, in the name of conservation. It? Now, what I've heard has happened is a big tour mob have come through. They've paid the bills now. They've got exclusive access to this place. So in the name of environment, like keeping the environment protected, they wanted to close the place. But if they get enough money, they're happy to let people come yeah, in. Yeah, that's a so, funny one, isn't it? I, I, well, it's not yeah, exactly right. And I know as well, they allowed mining up in that area as well. So they've put big haul roads through it. They've put millions of dollars in for mining. So they're happy yeah. to take all the resources out of the ground. They're happy to ban tourists unless they get enough money. And now the only way you can go and see this place is probably paying, you know, fifteen or twenty thousand dollars to sit in a bus, an air conditioned bus, and going. Oh, yeah. So instead of taking your family and your four wheel drive, it doesn't matter what budget you're on, you can get up there, 
put a swag on the ground and yeah, enjoy. Yeah, people can afford that. They Ex- can't afford the big bus. Exactly tour. right, mate. And, 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 and to be honest with you, even if I had the money, I wouldn't want to go on one of those bus nah, tours because nah. I like to go and explore myself. And places like this are getting taken away under the guise of trying to protect the environment, and it's absolutely wrong. It turns out if you've got enough money, you can get through all that crap. They're not exactly. really interested in protecting the environment. They're interested in taking money off the hands of people. And as four-wheel drivers, we sort of sit there and watch this happen around us, and it's about time we do something. And um, now's a bit where I want to ask you guys, if you have any views on this, let me know in the comments let below. Know, yeah. Join in on the conversation. Um, something tells me that in some time in the not-too-distant future, we're going to have your big Nissan, mate, your project Nissan. We're going to have Sooty. We're going to have the Hilux. We're going to have um, one of Graham's rigs drive in with about 5,000 four-wheel drives down to Parliament House to mm. protest because if we don't do something about this and stand united as a four-wheel yeah. drive community, we're going to lose um, all this like Australian said, bush, exactly, mate. And, yeah. It's um, going to be sad. It's going to be, it's going to be a huge day if we, if we get this wrong. So it starts now, folks. Let us know in the comments what you've got to say. Very keen to see what the general sentiment is out there. Yeah, exactly. Now, of course, also, we can't do a beers in the shed without doing our fails, our rigs, mm. and uh, hearing from some of you folks as well. And to let you know, we always give away prizes, mate. Do you know what the prize is? Uh, our mates at Forex have rustled something for us this week, haven't they? They have, mate. We've got a couple of merch packs to give away, which are really, really cool. We'll deck you out with some really cool Forex gear um, simply from getting involved in our shed show. So we'll let you know how to do that in a second. But first... Let's have a look at something that everyone can win, mate, a mm. deal of the month. Well, guys, if you're looking to get some steady lights in the front of your rig, listen up. If you get any pair of these new Type X Evos or Quad Pros or a set of Type X Pros, well, we're going to chuck in two medium-sized snatch clear top bags worth $138. The best way to take advantage of that is to jump on our website, fulldrive247.com, but make sure you hurry. It's only while stocks last, and the offer actually ends on the 4th of October. So get in quick. Well, here it is, guys, the news you've been waiting for. We've got a huge announcement to make. Now, I've actually got four roles at the moment because we're growing so much that we've got roles in our Sydney and Brisbane offices. They're full-time roles. Now, if you're a videographer, you might be a video editor, you might be a social media whiz, or you might want to join our YouTube team and help organise all the trips. Now, I'm going to say to you, the right candidate is a passionate person. Passion is what builds the four-wheel drive 24-7 team, if you haven't worked it out by now. Every single person, from the guys behind the scenes to us in front of the camera, we're all super passionate about the four-wheel drive and off-road lifestyle. So if that sounds like you and you want to learn more information about these full-time roles, well, I'm going to put a link down in the description so you can actually have a look at the job roles. If not, jump onto seek.com.au and search four-wheel drive 24-7. The jobs will pop up. Now, I can't wait. I hope one of you guys, one of our subscribers, lands one of these dream jobs, and hopefully I'll be having a beer and a campfire with one of you guys shortly. One of my favorite sections, mate, when people try their best but fail. Yeah. And I love watching it. I love seeing people have a go and uh, they don't quite make it out because I think it's quite relatable, mate, as a bloke like you and me. Yeah. I reckon, uh, it's, it's good to laugh at other people's misfortune <laughs> yeah. because normally we're laughing at each other's misfortune. Exactly right. We're, we're, <laughs> we're pretty prone to failing ourselves. Yeah. Now, this one here is in Always Planned. And it sounds like he's doing exactly that, mate. You know this track. Reversing up Little Red. I'm just going to make the call early. This can only end bad. It can only end bad. And mm. look, like, I think it's a patrol, is it? It has to be a patrol because if you're trying that in... Uh, it looks like a Hilux, I reckon. Is it a Hilux? Maybe. Well, you're playing with fire, mate, because <laughs> apart from nearly rolling it on your lid, you could easily do a front diff so fast in one yeah, of those vehicles. it's actually a very good way to break your car, reverse up something, yeah. So that's a good fail. Learn from always playing. Don't try and reverse mm, up tracks. Just go forward. Just go forward. It's hard enough sometimes going forwards. <laughs> I reckon there's going to be a car stuck in there. Yeah, exactly. Have a go at that. That, that Prado is uh, literally it's, floating. It's got water up to the seats. It's never going to smell the same ever again. It's never going to run the same oil. <laughs> yeah, that's it, a point. That's a point. That, we've all been there, especially when we get into full wheel drive. You first get your red peas, you just, <laughs> every mud puddle just hitting it. We've yep. all done it. It's so much fun, but then you realise that it costs lots of money. Yeah. Ah, uh, bugger, hey? That's um, a bit of a shame, but hopefully mm. you learnt from that one. And there's a good little tip for young players out there. If you do come across a bog hole, don't just jump into it. Go get a stick. Go see how deep mm. it is. And what you're looking for is the bottom B. I'm a bit yeah. of an expert with mud now. I can feel the bottom and go, you know yeah. what? Probably going to get stuck And if in it's that. pretty soft, just tell your mates it's all good and make them <laughs> yeah, go make first. Make them go first. That's very important. <laughs> oh, oh speaking of mud. Andy.cat4x4. Um, this is, we've all been here, mate. They're all 
All Toyotas too. Yeah, yeah, well, I've certainly been here in Toyotas <laughs> bog. Five hours worth of winching. Oh, far out. It's just one of those ones where everyone's bogged. Mm. You know, some yep. they've actually done well to get out of there. Yeah, that's and, that's down to the sills. That's really stuck. Yeah, that really is, mate. Five hours of winching. That's yeah, it's a bit of a fail, but look, it's a you know what? They I got bet, out. That's they, the main they thing. They got out, and I bet they're super pumped about that one. Yeah. So a fail, but I'll I'm never a, forget that day. It's a feel good story at the end of it. This is not a feel good story. Oh, yep. This one, Jack Farnham N70, and uh, have a look what happens with this N70, mate. It's running on by the looks of it. Must have got a gut full of water. Oh, I think it sucked in a <laughs> stack of water <laughs> That's straight, th there. <laughs> straight through, straight through the intake, and uh, yeah, he's getting towed home by the looks. That's nah, not good. It's never mm. a good feeling when you've got to get towed out of a track and your vehicle's got to go on a tow truck. No. Right? You know what? That's how many times that happened to you? Um, never a tow truck. I could never afford one, but yeah. lots, lots of car trailers, <laughs> definitely. Been, it's definitely been towed out a couple of times. It's happened yeah. to me a couple of times, but not many. And um, there's no more of a sinking feeling yeah. when you know you've done your engine. Mm. And uh, you know how expensive they are, mate. That's, yeah, again, water. Check, Check depth. the depth. Check the depth. It really isn't that hard. Um, oh, no. Ooh. Black soil country, mate. This one's from Darcy Barnes. Ooh. Oh, that looks messy. That looks like a top end somewhere. Yeah. He's done a roost on the tree from trying to get through. Far out. <laughs> that, that mud, though, once you go down in that black soil country, yeah. it gets... You just can't get back up on top. No, nah, and despite, we, you know, that's up there, get a good wet up there. Yeah. It can be And very... it probably looked like, it looked dry on the top, but... Uh... Just very mm. difficult. And you go down in black soil, mate. We've, we've done it a bunch of yeah. times on, you know, you and I have done it a bunch of times together. And yeah, just... up, at, up at Cape and stuff. And yeah, Once you just... go down, it's, it's, a, it's a proper drama. You're down for the day. Well... We've got to pick a winner, mate. We have to pick mm. one winner, someone to get a 4X yeah, merch pack. There's, there's some couple of good ones there. I've yeah. got one in mine. Mm -hmm. um, I want you to pick this one, though. What do you think? Oh. Okay, all right. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. You yeah, took you, too, you go. You took too <laughs> no, long. I wasn't ready for that. I, <laughs> I reckon we, we um, give the 4X merch pack to the bunch of Toyos that were winching for five hours mm. straight. Yeah, I reckon. Um, that, the, those guys, they they would have had. They earned it. They they That's certainly the they certainly earned a merch pack, mate. Yeah. So there you go, merch pack from 4X, and um, you know, keep on winching, guys. That's <laughs> that's brilliant. <laughs> now let's get into some rigs, mate. Rigs. You're you like seeing the odd. Good looking rig, mate. I, I know you do, Jesse. I do. There's a fair few in the backyard here. Well, I haven't seen I any Sean yet, mate. Park out the front. <laughs> I haven't seen any yet, mate. There's a couple of wrecks. I reckon the council's going to be on the view <laughs> to try and take some of these rust uh, buckets out of here. It, listen You're to You're bringing it. down the, the property prices in your local area. <laughs> no, but honestly, let's see some good rigs and we'll start yeah. off with an absolute cracker. Pretty tidy looking 80 series. Ella, Looks good all in black. Ella 80. Mm. Her 80. And she's pretty proud of that. And for yeah. good reason too, mate. Yeah. That's, a, that's an absolute rig, that 80. Holy heck. Look at it. Look at it, mate. That's it's got a gorgeous. Grill, flash grill like yours. It does have a flash grill. It's got the f fancy headlights. Mm. It's got everything. It just looks nice. And um, she looks after it, but also she's not afraid of it. Yeah, it, get, it well. gets used. That's cool. I think that's pretty cool. Next up, we've got Built Parado. And this is a pretty tidy looking 90 series Parado. These things are actually a bit underrated, I reckon. I'm about to say the exact same thing, mm. mate. One of the most underrated trucks out there. You can get them at a steal. Yeah. And you can see with a few basic mods, you take yeah. it from being a shopping trolley, you know, something it, that can, it looks cool too, like yeah. with the big wheels and everything. Look, it's got an, I think it's got an aftermarket paint job. Yeah. He's got, looks like he's done some raptor coating around the flares yeah. there. He's got his roof rack, awning. Mm. It's set up for wheeling and, and touring. And yeah. you see, he gets out and uses it, mate. The Good roof rack tent, look at that. Living the dream. What a weapon. Yeah, it's cool to see. You can do that with a budget, mate, and get out there. Oh, you'll like this one. Yeah, I, I've actually got- Hang on, hang on, hang on. Just <laughs> some sort of stitch up. <laughs> this bloke's name is Jesse. Uh, and guess what? He's got one of the tidiest Nissans yeah. I've ever seen. I've got many photos of this car saved in my computer. I was actually, my <laughs> junker was going to be a carbon copy of this car many years ago. The the BMW I motorbought for the GU, actually, I was going to make this car out of my junker with the BMW motor. Really? Yeah, yeah, obviously, but I bought so, a house and all my spare money went. So. Well, I get it. That looks like it's not a cheap but build. It's, it's very, it's very nice. It's beautiful, isn't it? Go through what we're looking at here, mate. For the Nissan purists out there. Oh, we've we got, got ourselves a... a beautiful wagon that started off life as a gorgeous little wagon. Mm. It's a TD42. It's got a nice little chop on it. And my favourite thing is the colour. I think the colour mm -hmm. really suits. Roof sliders. It's got the light bar under the windscreen there. 
Big 37s. It's very tasteful. Yeah. it's Some, Sometimes when people chop a vehicle, then you mm. can probably attest it is they get it wrong. Yeah. It doesn't quite look right. That one looks that like that should have come from a factory. Impo- I like how low it is too with the big wheels on it. And yeah. Yeah. That it, would be. It, it just looks cool. I really like it. Big canopy and I bet you it's still really capable, that mm. rig. Definitely. Yeah. You know what? I don't mind you, that. You'd, you'd drive I, that for I, sure. I'd get around that. This is cool. This is very cool. You don't see these out in the tracks very often. No. Nah, right. Jock, would, Jock jo- would really Jock, like this. Jock would love this. Mm. Roving beyond. Jock actually wants to build one of these up. Yeah. Now, is this a Parentes or a Defender? Uh, it it, lo- it's it a Parentes. It's a Parentes. It's got the paint job, I reckon. Yeah. Look at this. And up in Cape York. Yeah. It's just something really cool about these yeah. things. I think they're just, they're tough too, obviously, because they've got, got not all Land Rover parts. They've got on the Suzu <laughs> motor. I think that's what makes yeah. them so cool. And yeah. they coil. Um, all round, they've got solid axles and with a few little mods on it. And, yeah. um, you know, what, what I like about it, it's rough and ready. Mm. You know, you're going to get dust absolutely through that thing. Yeah. I don't see it. Even if it was a hard top, it still wouldn't seal right. Yeah. You'd get water and dust everywhere through it. But guess what? Roving beyond is getting right amongst yeah. it. That's and, the uh, best part about the tally track. It'll be full of dust and you'll go through Nolan's at the end and wash it all wash, out. Wash it all out. What a way to do it. This Wait. is the weapon, this one. Stefan Matthews has got himself a Dohatsu and... I like the snorkel. It's the same as Daryl's one. Yeah, he must be a plumbing plum- special. He must be a plumber as well, mate. This is a cool little, little yeah. truck. What I like about this sort of stuff is, firstly, it's different. But check the story out. He's bought the Dahatsu four x four for five grand and mm. built it up himself. So obviously, super budget. But guess what? He's out there using it and having an absolute blast. Yeah, and he's built it all himself. It's got a full, got a full camping setup. Oh, I love it, man. Table on the back. The bull bar. Look at the, Look yeah. at the big old custom bar. It's that's got a awesome. winch. And that snorkel actually looks good. Like, Well, you know what? It goes to show that you just don't need to go spend mm. huge dollars and have exactly. everything that opens and shuts. Yeah. You can do it on, a, on an absolute budget. I bet you old Stefan is having one of the times of his life for that rig. <laughs> he's Ste- having a lot Stephen of fun. or Stefan. We're going to go with Stefan. And um, he's having a time of his life for that vehicle, mate. And um, shows you can get out there on a budget. Now, we've got to pick a winner. The mm. best rig. Now, I got the last one, mate. I, I don't you know to- if we have to really pick this. It picked itself, I reckon. You're going to say that Addy series, aren't you? Yeah. No, 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 no. Well, I, I reckon that I reckon Jesse's GQ Patrol. That I reckon it's rigged. I reckon uh, it's rigged. It could be rigged because I'm a Nissan man. Jesse Sean, with a GQ. Sean said he would drive it, and you know anyone what? in the audience, put in the comments if you think that thing deserves is pretty it? tidy. I reckon it definitely deserves okay. it for sure. All right. Well, Jesse, he's won it. Jesse, and I'm I made sure the call. it's not Jesse Gleason. Jesse with the really nice GQ is going to get like himself it. a 4X um, merch pack. And um, that is it. That, look, it's a very, very tidy rig. I mm. love the amount of work that's mm. gone into that thing. Heaps of attention to the Absolutely too. gorgeous. Now, just remember, folks, if you do want to get your pride and joy on our rigs or even our fails, you put it up mm. on its lid or get it full of water, <laughs> which seems to happen quite a lot. Yeah. All you need to do is when you upload a pic to social media, use the hashtag four wheel drive 24 7 rigs or fails depending on what you've done with your rig. And uh, we're going to go through those. We'll pick those yeah, and you can actually you win might a, see it on the show. You win a prize. It mm. sounds pretty cool to me, mate. And there's one last little thing before we wrap up, because we're getting to that time of the day, mate, where I'm just about dangerously empty here. <laughs> um, I just want to put a big thank you out to you guys for all your support. We have recently cracked over a million mm. subscribers. That's crazy, isn't it? A That's million. a lot of people. Imagine a million people in your shed, Jesse. <laughs> you, you, We'd you be might, packed. I wouldn't want to be in the bottom. <laughs> you might need a bigger shed. Now, yeah. I just want to say a big thank you for all of the support. And just if you do get a second, just mm. to like and subscribe to our page, because mm. it really does mean so much to us. Definitely. But the good news is, don't just do it just for our reason. We've got some epic content mm. coming up. Um, what about your GU build? GU build, yeah. I was away with Jock last week, but I'm back. And this week, I'm going to be flat out into it. It's running now. So, end of this next episode, I'm hoping to have it driving. Probably won't be driving on the road, but I'll drive it in now the shed. That's, that's, that's my cool. plan, Mate, I reckon. When a vehicle can move on its own steam, you know you're so far through the oh, field. Things definitely. are going to start looking really cool yeah. on that rig. I can't wait to see it. It's going to come sitting, together quick. It's just sitting near the frame here. Just over there. And yeah. um, it, it looks like a proper... Nissan at the moment, it's all in pieces. <laughs> oh, I'll listen to it. <laughs> but you know listen what? It. It's actually a really cool build, so you'll get to see that. Um, also, we're going to see the Rubicon Trail, mm, which is our first I'm, I'm going to watch that. I'm keen. Mate, honestly, honestly, put that one in your diary. That is going to be – I'm so super proud of that. We drove some of the most crazy things. In fact, I just want to put a little bit of a teaser out there so you can mm. see for yourself what you're getting yourself in for. Stop! Oh, can you just oh. – After 20 years of full driving and camping in some of the most wild places in Australia, I finally shipped my Land Cruiser to the US. 
in search of some of the most iconic trails and campsites you can only dream of. This place is unhinged, like nothing I've ever seen in Australia. I'm in the Dirty 30 on the start of the Rubicon Trail. Oh wait! A lot of guys said, can't really do it on 35s. Turns out, we've got this far. It's just challenge after challenge after, it just doesn't stop. There go. Join a couple of crazy Aussies on an adventure of a lifetime. Honestly, mate, one of the single best four-wheel driving experience I've ever had in my life, and I don't say that lightly, yeah. that absolutely blew me away. In fact, I loved it so much, but I was thinking of you and Jock the whole time, because <laughs> I knew how much you guys would absolutely yeah. fuck it, technical wheeling. Yeah. So um, I think you need to come to the US with me next Definitely, time, mate. Yeah, and, for um, sure, for sure. Come and have a drive or something. It would have been straps. extra special doing it in that car you took so long to build and having it over there, that would have just mate, that made it unreal. Honestly. It just ticked every yeah, box for me. And, and I can't wait to share it with you. That's coming very soon on YouTube. Well, thank you so much. And if you haven't, if you've forgotten, make sure you leave, leave a comment down below. Mm. Join in on the hot topic about track yeah. closures in this country. It's a topic that you can tell we're very passionate about, and I know you guys are too. Leave us a comment below what you're seeing out there on the ground level, mm. what you're seeing on your local tracks, and what you're going to do about it more yeah. importantly. Give us some ideas on what we should do to help or how you can help, how we can help. Absolutely, mm. absolutely. I reckon the fight is starting right now. Folks, thanks again for tuning in, and we'll catch you next time on 4 Drive 24-7.